So hello to all of you, and uh, hopefully you can see me live on the webcam. And from my perspective, it's uh, sure it's been a long week. We've uh, had an amazing couple of days with uh, some of the most esteemed players in the fintech space from a global perspective. But it's also been pretty full on. I uh, haven't had a weekend now, two weekends. So yeah. But uh, before we get started here, I just wanted to see who we got online, and I also just wanted to get some sort of perspective in terms of uh, where are we now? my dashboard, in terms of questions. So guys, if you've got any questions, please, uh, please fire away. I know we did our last uh, Wealth Partner update back in uh, November, so effectively it's three months, and we always try and keep them going on a three-monthly basis. For those of you listening to it on the recording, no problem. Obviously, being live is much better because we can ask the questions and, and, and interact. So I would appreciate in terms of if uh, people ask questions. Just wanting to find out why those questions not coming up. Oh, there they are. OK. Right. So we've got them finally. Cool. Uh, OK. Spot on. So I'm going to rock and roll. It's the 8th of February, and it's time to give you an update of what, where we are this year and what we're going to focus on. I did um, mention to a number of people at the end of last year, you know, some of the recognition we got towards the end of last year, I did talk about it a little bit, but I just wanted to reiterate in terms of you know, getting the FinTech top three, I think was, was pretty impressive. But the one that really, really was astounding to me was the KPMG FinTech top 100. And that's the global fintech companies, and KPMG and a group called H2 Ventures do a worldwide survey. We were actually in the top 50, we were number 41. And what was really interesting, Kevin went and did some research, and the average funding was $436 million per company. The average value was $1.74 billion. There were four listed companies and 20 unicorns. And the other thing that I found absolutely fascinating is that from a perspective of of the amount of funding, the 49th company had $18 million, and the 48th company had $29 million, and we were sitting on about $6 million in terms of uh, funding. So it really shows you what we've been able to achieve in, in with, with far more limited resources. And you know, it's really such a pat on the back to, to the team and, and to this wealth partner community for what's being achieved and what's being recognized at a global level. I wanted to start off with this. We this weekend we spoke a lot about exponentials again, and you know I think a lot of people that are part of the wealth partner community are really starting to learn about exponentials. What are exponentials? Why are exponentials important? You know, and, and quite fundamentally, why they're changing business, as you know. Now, if you if you're not, you know, understanding you know exponentials, then I highly recommend that you go and spend some time because you know the, the leaders of the future. I don't care how old they are are going to be people that are playing in the exponential space. And when you look at it, there's a framework for exponential organization. So it starts with an MTP, a massive transformative purpose. Then you've got scale, which is all the external factors, staff on demand, community crowd, algorithms, leverage assets, and engagement. And then ideas, which are all the internal, which is interfaces, dashboards, experimentation, autonomy, and social technologies. Now, when we did the, the live events in October last year, I actually went through each of these and showed everyone where we're at. And I'll just pick a few here. You know, when we talk about massive transformative purpose, you know, our intention is to solve the greatest challenge on the planet and empower a billion people by 2020. You know, it's a fairly, fairly significant uh, MTP, and I truly believe it's one of the, you know, the reasons that we've attracted such incredible people to be part of this team. You know, staff on demand. When you look at what we're doing with, with singular and uh, singular systems. And uh, many, many other organizations. Tanya on the design side, uh, Kevin and Ricky now on, on their new company. It really is staff on demand and being able to scale and leverage. Community and crowd, well, that's exactly what the Wealth Partner community is. And you know, one of the things that I really want to see us doing is getting more and more active with our, with our um, Wealth Partner community. So again, that, that website's community.wealthmigrate.com. Algorithms, well, you all know, should know about our Git system and all the, the back end scientific methodology that's going into finding the best properties globally. And then leverage assets, you know, as an example, 
or we don't own any servers. Everything is is on uh, scalable and and uh, leveraged server technology. You know, across it's called the zero. It's across the world. And then engagement is somewhere that we really want to actually pick up our skills. You know, we, we don't believe we're there yet in terms of digi digitization and incentive enterprises, etc. You know, on the interfaces, it's how do the team and the, and the global team work together? Dashboards is looking at our KPIs and how effective we're being. Experimentation is something that we're getting better at as Chinese and South Africans and Australians because we, we're quite hard on ourselves and we, you know, we don't want to be wrong, but actually, you know, to, to win going forward, it's all about experimentation. Autonomy, you know, the olden day structures were all about top down, now it's about autonomy, and then I think we're pretty, pretty good at the social technology side. So we've actually been doing this for a long time. We did the test about a year ago, and with regards to the management team, we were sitting at a 43. If you are 54 or above, you are, you are deemed to be a true exponential organization. So the reason we consistently do it is that every decision we make, we want to be going in the right direction towards being a true exponential organization. When we did it on the weekend, we were at 48. And so to start off with, on the question side, if anyone else would like to get access to that test, then, you know, for yourself, for Wealth Migrate, or even on behalf of your own company, then just type in the chat box, exponential organization, and, uh, and you'll be able to, you know, to be able to actually, uh, we'll be able to send it to you. Okay, so let's look through here. In terms of, a, um, I want to play some videos. So we really were looking, it was about October last year, I've spoken to you a lot about Lex and the way that he came into the organization. He grew his own company to $100 million and then became a scaling coach to help technology companies scale. He's from California. He's done over 100 technology companies. And he really set us up for success. And one of the things from a board perspective was getting a world-class board with a balance between technology and property. And by Henny's own admission, we were probably too strong in the property side and not strong enough in the tech side. So I was given a mission to go out and recruit you know, four or five of the best people globally to, to be able to participate at a board level and at an advisory level. They have all uh, flew in this Friday. We, we went away to a, to a venue for, for two days where the leadership team gave them a full update on where we were at. We obviously explained where we want to go and then you know, we also asked for help. And I wanted to just share with you a, little, a couple of video clips from some of the people that were there. So the first guy that was there is a guy called Willem van der Post. He basically heads up exponential technologies for Deloitte, uh, so Deloitte's recruiting or consulting, sorry. And he travels all over the world and he sat with us for an entire day. He knows uh, Henny through Henny's daughter who's been studying exponentials and is one of the forward-thinking ladies in South Africa in this space. And he came and sat with us for an entire day. And this video is right at the end where I'm literally asking what is his opinion on what he's heard on Wealth Migrate and where it's going. Now, if it doesn't work so well for you or it jumps a little bit because sometimes it does that on Goji Meeting, that's fine. Bear with me. It's not really about watching the video. It's about listening to what he's saying. And most importantly, if you need the recording, just put, just write there, Willem van der Post, and we can actually put the video um, you know, on the WhatsApp group or on the community. So enjoy this. It's a, a three or four minute video of him summing up what he thinks of Wealth Migrate based on all the exponential companies he's seen all over the world. This is uh, Willem needs to leave. Yeah, no, no, it's all good. And uh, what we wanted to do was just to, to get a little bit of perspective from yourself, you know, with the introduction that, that he provided. Again, this was the last one at .com. I think you guys met on Monday or Tuesday. And he was like, hey, we'll get together for the weekend. So he changed his plans for Saturday to come through and, and be with us. And you know, just firstly, huge appreciation for you being here. Uh, you know, we, we, you know, I don't think this might be the end of the conversation, but just in terms of any perspectives or any leading thoughts in terms of you know, where, where you're at, and we can then keep going back to what you want to do. Thanks for breaking the rhythm to do that. Thanks very much for having me. So I've spent the last three years focusing only on exponential tech and um, literally if someone asked me where I live, I would answer on Emirates because it's a lot of trouble to get to all of these great. Okay, just two seconds guys. I'm being told my screen is not showing. Uh, why is my screen not showing?
But Jenny, I'm just going to okay. just uh, can you just confirm quickly in the chat box or Jenny, if you can tell me is the screen showing now? Okay, gotcha. So let me restart that video. Twenty seconds. This is probably one of the most exciting high potential opportunities that I've certainly seen. Out of thousands of startups that all have big promise, this seems to be extremely practical. And what I really like is that um, you can embrace the, the notion of information structuring and thinking both inside of the teams and projects with a lot of practical and the technology side. So it seems to have a Formation of what's going to be a very nice farming in this space. So, uh, personally, I'm really excited about this. Um, there are a couple of touch points that we've already found through the Code Association, the Digital, there, uh, specifically around blockchain and smart contracting and things like that. And also, a nice type of partner on board that has a uh, global footprint in terms of the compliance. If you wish to invest this at ease around the type of credentials that your developers may or may not have, franchise that sort of check this thing, I think is a great option. Um, there are a couple of problems with developers in South Africa, but seeing it's around the room, maybe you don't need it. Uh, the subscribe to an institute that we built that teaches exponentials, and I can tell you for free that the number of people that hear about <laughs> exponential today. There are all the because I put all these over here, always tells us for free. So we are in natural harmony. <laughs> They shift themselves because they can feel the tremor of the earthquake that's coming, but all that is a fundamental question of so what do we do now? I think partnership and collaboration are words that are coming to mind in these big uh, almost monopoly type enterprises that leave their simple and leave for a long time that their size just makes them indestructible. I think that notion is starting to dissipate. And I've had a series of inquiries and questions and requests around finding exponential type partners for some of these funds. So Maybe there's a little bit of uh, inspiration that we can do there as well. And then by the same token, we spend the time in a lot of first world, specifically out of obviously Silicon Valley, but more so in Tel Aviv. I've had numerous, numerous requests from private equity and uh, VC to find emerging market-based experimental cloud opportunities, of which I'm convinced that this is one. So from a funding perspective, the numbers that you threw around and what I've seen in the packing group, go through in a bit more detail, I think that was today. Um, I think there are some additional collaboration uh, activities. A couple of risks as well. Uh, it sounds like we've got the risk mindset fully covered. I'm more interested in the outside. I think you've got an amazing look to get to the point where you are. I'm also going to send this part of that great space. So, yeah, I'm the systems go. I think it's really nice to be here. <laughs> so a couple of key things there that I think are important is that he's been working with exponential organizations all over the world and he hasn't, uh, you know, he really thinks this is a, a great opportunity. He also has partners here in South Africa, uh, real estate developers and, and REITs and funds that have come to them wanting to get involved in exponential organizations, and uh, which is fascinating to me. And the other thing was he's got private equity firms around the world that are looking to get into emerging markets. And he was really impressed with the team, the culture, the technology, the wealth mindset, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, it was all, uh, all really quite, uh, quite interesting in terms of what is actually happening. So. Let's, uh, let's look then. We also had a presentation from Danielle Vesadino, who's Henny's daughter. So any of you who are parents, I highly recommend that uh, you get your children into exponentials as quickly as you possibly can. And um, I think what's important is that, you know, uh, Kevin, you say you lost sound. Can you guys hear me? What's going on tonight? Is it... Uh, let's confirm if... If the sound's off. Okay, you can hear. Okay, fine. So, Danielle Besaidno basically went to um, 
university and then she, I think she went to do like an executive MBA at uh, Stanford and she's really focused on exponentials. She's done a dissertation on it, she's created an entire model about it. And what's fascinating for me is that she came and actually did a presentation on exponentials and really you know, everyone in the room was blown away and she's literally 23 years old. So we're going to be working with her as, a, as an advisor hopefully in terms of that space. She's working with some of the biggest companies in the world. She's hugely hot property. She just finished studying and rather than only starting to work in January or February and have a holiday in December, they wanted her to start right in December because she's got so many clients. Then, um, and I think from, um, from uh, Henny and Peter's perspective, uh, you know, Henny's known Peter for about six years. Peter basically, it's quite an interesting one, um, you know, I pitched the Wealth Migrate idea to Henny and Peter. Henny jumped on board, Peter didn't. And what was fascinating, Peter was there all weekend and uh, as of this morning became a wealth partner with a, with a, uh, a good solid investment and equally um, prepared to come on as a board member, but I'll talk about that a little bit later. Then Justin Clark, for those of you who don't know, Justin Clark is the owner of private property and they basically built platforms across Africa in 16 different countries, four different platforms per country between property, cars, jobs, I'm not sure what the other one is, I think it might be travel. And um, anyway, so I've probably got more experience in the space than almost anyone else in Africa and this is what he had to say, um, it's much shorter, it's about 40 seconds on his experience. First of all, thank you very much for inviting us here, yeah, I think, especially with your buzz and Yen Su. But, you know, it's, the first thing that struck me, I think I said this one, was, you know, initially I thought, what's my great, it's much older than I did. But I think that what I've been really impressed with is the capacity around this table, and that's what makes me super excited. The other thing that I, that I just want to say, apart from apologizing, is that um, you know, sometimes you have to just zoom back and, and understand how big this opportunity is and how close you are to where you are. And um, yeah, the razor sharp focus and all those other little things that you have to implement in the part of going for. But you know, the outcome is going to be great. It's just going to be great if you just execute. And, uh, and I look forward to following it. So sometimes you just have to dial back a little bit and understand how big this opportunity is and how close you are to it. And then talks a lot about execution. And uh, very, very delighted to say that um, Justin also is, is keen to, to really jump on board and help us uh, with regards to that execution. Then uh, Bill Palladino. So I met Bill through John O. Rawson and he basically is an American he went to Harvard, he then worked in Amazon, uh, as I understand it, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Then he got uh, recruited to go and uh, write the e-commerce side of Dell in Asia, including China, and then got headhunted back to NASPAS uh, to run their e-commerce division, and he actually left about a year ago. I resigned and, and has been you know, doing angel investing. So very, very strong in e-commerce and also had invaluable insights. We will. We've actually recorded the entire weekend, so we will be making it more professional so that we can actually really analyze you know, the plethora of incredible advice that we had. And I mean, as an example, Bill really wants to get into the detail and the data around the customer journey and how we can you know, really get raving fans in terms of the customer experience. Mon Freeman, Mon's the next IPS client, came on a buyer's trip, bought a couple of houses, then got involved in medical. Then we found out he's actually a fintech expert. He's done five fintechs. His most recent company got about 500 million rand last year in funding from Investec. And uh, really, really awesome guy and, and added invaluable perspective in terms of where, the, you know, where we're going, what we're doing, and, and how, do we, how do we basically optimize on this, uh, on this opportunity, capitalize on this opportunity in terms of where we were. So I'm not sure why Henny and Peter came up twice there, but anyway, Peter Fenstra, I think I've mentioned already. So guys, this is where it starts to get a little bit exciting. And from my perspective, I wanted to share screens here. So you would have seen at the end of last year that we basically, you know, we, we, we showed the KPIs and everything of what we're looking for. So there's 15 major metrics that we're looking for in terms of our growth for 2017. And, there's, and, there's, and then behind that, at a global level, we can 
dial down per country, there's another 84 metrics, but effectively it's number of leads, user acquisition costs, what they call CIC, customer acquisition costs. Then we've got new users, so just so we speak the same language, a lead is someone who comes onto the platform, uh, sorry, no, not on the platform, a lead is, is someone where we get their name, their email, their mobile number, a user is someone who signed up on the platform, total users I think self-explanatory, an investor is someone that actually has invested. Now transactions is our X, and I'm going to explain that a little bit, uh, a little bit just now as to why that's so important, that's why it's in red. The rate of equity is obviously how fast we raise the equity, the equity is the amount of equity, the average transaction is the size of each transaction. Now what's the difference between an investor and a transaction is that you might have one investor, you know, I might be an investor, but I might invest in four deals, so that's four different transactions. Then obviously number of deals available, then digital products on system, then suppliers on system, then revenue, cash balance, and then runway. And then what you did is you can see that we tracked that out. So I, I, I worked so hard with Michiel here, and we basically built out our projections of what we're aiming for in, uh, in 20, 2017. And then Michiel's taken this spreadsheet and gone far, far deeper with his team. And this is what I was really excited to show you. So this is our global dashboard. And what we're going to do, I can send you this link. So if you're interested in global dashboard, just type it in and we'll send you the link. I'll even put this in the chat box uh, for now. Okay, so it's in the chat box. And we really want to get to the point where we're sharing this. You know, at the moment, the, the, the numbers are updated on a weekly basis on a Monday morning. But we want to get to the point where this is real-time data. It's been pulled from all over from our portal, from Salesforce, from, from the different systems, but all coming into one place. So that we at any one point see exactly where the company is, where we're going, and most importantly, how we're doing against our metrics. So you can see here, this was actually updated today in, in, uh, you know, in preparation. So we've got 1,685 uh, registered users. We've done 750 transactions. We've got 325 new investors. Uh, 686 South Africans, 59 overseas, two, so 2.3 average transactions per investor. So what that means is when an investor comes on the platform, on average they invest 2.3 times. We've done $56 million in total through platform, uh, over $300 million in deal value. Our average transaction size is $75,000. That's very relevant. I'll show you why later. And our total revenue to date is $4.5 million. Now the next one is interesting. So now if you look at the users, you can see here how the users um, have, have obviously you know, come in. And if you look at obviously 2017, it's, it's for the month of January. And you can see that you know, we're starting to get significant viral traction now in terms of the growth um, and where we are in terms of the different users. You can see the users per quarter here as well and, and uh, what's happening. So we're doing a lot of marketing um, in, in these periods. And then we actually, uh, due to cash flow constraints in, in the second quarter, you know, slowed down on the marketing, and you can see it di directly impacts with regards to the, the platform. And then you can see what's happening here in, the, in 2017. And then what I like here is you, know, you can see the users per week. You can see the uh, total registered users. You can see here the, uh, the users per week, et cetera, and, uh, and you know, literally breaking it down. So I, um, but the one I wanted to show you was this one, which for me is really interesting. So this is now the same KPIs I showed you, and it's broken down. You can see the 15 levels, although uh, Michiel has put in like a 1.1, etc. And we're now tracking. So we've got all our numbers for Q3. We've got all our numbers for Q4, and now we're tracking, you know, in Q1 where we're actually at. So what are our numbers, you know, versus our targets, etc., etc., etc. So it just gives us very tangible updates in terms of knowing where we're at, what our customer acquisition cost is, what's the rate of equity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I, um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll explain, I'll explain you know, in terms of why this is really, really important a little bit later. I'm not going to go uh, too much further, but you can see here, if you look at it, there was one graph that I was looking at earlier that I liked. Um, Those transactions. 
you keep changing it. <laughs> Every time I look at it, I've, I've changed it. Where's the transactions gone? Anyway, there was a number of transactions, and, and the transactions have actually been steadily growing every single uh, month, which has been fantastic. Really, really fantastic. So I just want to see if I can find that for you. Yes, this was it. Look at the transactions here. 40, 51, 56. So that's really exciting when you, when you start to see uh, that stuff happening in terms of where we're going and, and, and what is actually happening. Because remember that X are transactions, so this is the most important thing to be tracking in terms of where we're, where we're at. Okay, so now let's go into, I'm not going to bore you, but we've literally, if we drill down, we can see all our different projects. Oh, that's an important one. Our pipeline, so the number of deals we're evaluating in due diligence between level one and level two, um, and, and where they are on the stage. And then we can also see where partners came from. We can see the rate of raise of equity. We can, uh, we can track where the you know, leads are coming from, when the project's closed out. Where the leads came from, blah blah blah. I think you, I think you get the point across all the different, uh, all the different platforms. So, any questions on the dashboards and the KPIs before I move on? Because I think that it's incredible. And when you take an exponential organisation, we now have that data. You know, I want to get to the point where it's real time, and on the community platform as a wild partner, you know, and or anyone in the team, they can be logging in and seeing exactly where we're at. Anyone got any questions? If you want to get access to that, just uh, type in their global dashboard. I have put it in the chat box, and you can go and analyze it and look at it. And as I say, it gets updated on a weekly basis. At the moment, for some reason, the link is different every week. So the link that you got there, we'll need to get a new link every week. But what we're going to do is we're going to be updating it on the community platform. OK, so can you access it? Uh, don't understand, Mandy, what you mean by can you access it. Uh, Pierre said, what is the influence of the small investment amount? Obviously, clients can now do more transactions, so this might give you the wrong idea. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. We want to do more transactions. We want to have more users. That's why we have a platform, and I'll explain that uh, later in terms of where we're going. Okay, let me explain that in terms of where. So some of the wins that we've had literally since the last Wealth Partner update. We've got a new website. So if you haven't been to the new website, I recommend you do. It's kind of uh, version... Uh, 4.2 because it's certainly not version 5 but if I look here and go to no, where is what am I doing I thought I had it open what I do? so if you look here this is the new look and feel uh, in terms of the website we've now got uh, integrations through to the properties on the front end we've also got the coming soon section we've got the you know all about us we've got the why invest with us this is a really important one in terms of the testimonials both written with pictures and videos. It really gives the credibility and the social proofing, some of the recent awards we won, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think you can, you know, play around, play around with that in, in terms of in terms of where you where you are. But the team's done the team's done a great job. In terms of the testimonials, you know, guys, if, if you're happy with Wealth Night Grades and, and you've had a good experience, I'd really appreciate you writing, you know, a testimonial and even better, making a video. There's nothing that helps people trust better than client experiences. And so, you know, and even if you don't want to do a video, let's turn it into a case study. What's your story? You know, you you know, you didn't know how to invest overseas, you know, whatever. And even if stuff went wrong, I don't care if stuff went wrong, what, what did we do to fix it? Um, we want authenticity and be able to to really kind of share people's stories because people relate to people that don't relate to brands have been told that it's a, a good deal. Think of Airbnb or Uber or TripAdvisor you know, the peers tell everyone about uh, their experience. Then a very exciting thing in December was dropping the minimum investment to $1,000. And, you know, that, that really does fundamentally open up the, the rules of the game because it's a whole different market that now can get access, including all of us that have been earning, you know, dividends on our properties can now actually reinvest them. And then the coming soon section was another, another interesting uh, update which just came out where people can now go on and, and if they're interested in the property, they can put it on their watch list and it keeps them updated like zero to one, which is the you know, tallest re uh, building in Cape Town. And uh, you know, one, of, one of our really kind of spectacular buildings that are, that are coming online in terms of where we're actually going. Then uh, the channel partners. So this is an interesting one. So you can see here on the dashboard, you know, as a channel partner now, you, when, 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 uh, when you refer people, you can see you know, how many referrals you've had, how many sales you've had, your total commission, 
your opportunity stage, your opportunity pipeline, et cetera, et cetera. And if I just come back to it and here, I'd log in, uh, boom, 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 where's it gone? There it is. So I'm now in the channel partners, and you can see you've pretty much got all the different things. You've got leaderboards. Um, so it's just been set up. It's literally brand new. Um, so we've got our, you know, you can look in here, you can see your total referrals, you can uh, and track everything. So it's pulling everything through from Salesforce. You can see my accounts. So this is uh, Melanie. Uh, she joined the team in November. She's one of uh, Denise's colleagues. Uh, really, really esteemed lady in, in, this, uh, in this area. And along with Lyle and, and some of the other team guys, Cliff and them, they've pulled it all together so that we can really make this uh, work professionally now so that the partners can log in. So what I'm looking at is what a partner would be doing, logging in and seeing everything. And this was the sales dashboard I was showing you, you know, to be able to see where it is and, and effectively pulling everything through from the different areas. So you can see per project. Now you can imagine if you're referring people, you'll be able to go into any of the projects now and basically see where you're at, see how much money you've got, see where your pipeline of your opportunities are. When you look at your opportunity pipeline, that's what people have committed to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then even down to you know your marketing and you know how you want to do stuff, training videos, what's happening, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you get the point. And for me, if you want to speak to Melanie, um, it is Melanie in the office, and um, you know just type in there Melanie, and someone can get hold of you. You know really the the channel partner is, is how we really want to spread the message and be able to tell our friends and family and our colleagues about the opportunity, and particularly now that it's down to $1,000. It gives us all the ability for people to test us and get involved, and we'll see why that's so important in terms of users just now. In terms of the team engagement, we've made significant progress uh, in the last six months. You know, when you've got a global team and we integrated RPS, we, we definitely you know, made mistakes and, and, and had some challenges culturally in the team. I feel very strongly that if you're going to build a world-class team, you need a world-class culture, and that's not just in South Africa or China, it's, it's a global, and um, Lyndon Booth actually joined us in July, and over the last six months has been putting all the systems in place, and we're really starting to, to see the, the benefits of that. So if I go into small improvements, this here is a, is a global system in terms of the way that the teams can work, and so if I look here, this is, you know, I should be able to see my screen, we, we're all basically um, you know, in the system, and you can see you know how people can talk. You can do reviews on on your colleagues. I um, I've got to be a bit sensitive here, just in terms of uh, information. But I mean, you can see all the different reviews. You can see 360 feedback. Um, you know, my 360 feedback, the team team overview, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, and then it's even got uh, different goals and 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 where you are in terms of aiming with uh, team team objectives, etc. So this is really cutting edge in terms of what's happening and, and uh, growing an amazing team. And Lyndon literally has been rolling this out this quarter and giving everyone training. Then um, at the end of last year, we put in a salary grading system. Many of the team members don't even know this. He's built out an entire database where we've, where we've got a global salary grading system based on 12 different levels globally. And then people can be, you know, within their tier can be Obviously, um, that can be you know uh, minus one, zero, or plus one. There's an entire formula that works everything out. So there's complete transparency and fairness. And you know, from the engagement within the teams, there's it, it's not in there yet, but but we will actually be linking that with time into the small improvements, so that it's all pulling in the same direction to build an amazing team culture. In terms of the sales conference, Denise and and uh, organized a sales conference. We actually had it in Neisner, and it was there for two days, and really we, we had such a phenomenal um, two days. And there was a guy from that wasn't part of the company that uh, came along. He's you know he's ex Sandhurst, um, British Army, uh, worked for you know some some pretty impressive companies, uh, including investment banks in in England, and he was just blown away by the culture so much so. Uh, Lyndon was telling me. That he was telling his wife about it, and like she's so impressed, like she was asking if Lyndon can come and consult to their their company. You know, and the good news is is that that's exactly what we didn't want consultants. Uh, Lyndon's full time involved, and you know, if we're going to build a full time world class culture, we need to be able to focus on it full time. So this was the team. You can see all the hats and shirts they made, and uh, what I thought was pretty cool is on the back it said Exponential Growth 2017, which was the the tagline for the conference, and 
we also had quite a lot of fun um, sitting around dinner tables and uh, you know out on the boat. You can see my boat was pretty full. But I think what was pretty cool is that uh, you know it was actually really cheap and cost effective and, and a lot of fun you know in being in, in different people's environments. And then Yaku One Exponential Finance. One of the biggest things I learned last year was you know I've spent my life you know trying to gather information and learn everything. And last year Yaku went to Exponential Finance in June, and he just he just completely changed after that. You know it was absolutely amazing in terms of uh, where you know where we were going and uh, and and his understanding of of blockchain and, and everything else. And I learned such a lesson about empowering the team and, and the, the team getting access to world class knowledge. And on that basis, you know, Yako, Jay, and, and uh, Michiel went to Business Mastery with Tony Robbins, which are the top, um, you know, some of the top businessmen in the world, something I did in 2010 that had an amazing influence on, you know, our, or well, my business and, and, and my understanding of business. And really, you know, I believe this this will help take them to another level. And I mean, just as my interest from a cash flow perspective, the guys actually funded uh, the tickets themselves. Um, although it's something that we really want to, you know, put a world uh, a, a culture across the team and and a budget across the team to ensure that people are attending world class training. Otherwise, we won't be world class. And then this weekend, I explained to you already, but we got people to Tundla. I'm not sure if you, a couple of you, recognise this. But it's the game farm that we did the Wealth Weekend at in July 2015. This is a panoramic picture, and um, we'd actually organised on the walls here these big A naught posters of other crowdfunding companies and how much capital they had raised. And uh, this one on the front here was a bit of fun, saying Wealth Migrate uh, Marketplace raises 20 million dollars, and uh, you can see the different people sitting around. There's Justin, Dolph DeRuis. Bill Palladino, but it's probably easier if I do it from the other side. Uh, there was a game drive on the first night. Uh, that was Henny welcoming everyone, and um, you know, deep gratitude. People came from uh, Dubai, Australia, and America. And then, uh, if you look around the group here, this is Yaku. That was Philem van der Post. That's Paul Madeira from Australia. That's Kevin. That is Derek uh, from Dubai. That's Peter Fenstra. Justin Clark, Dolph DeRuis, Bill Palladino, Martin Freeman, Jakes, Cliff, Lowe, Michiel, and Henny. And you can see some of those posters. Real estate crowdfunding startup, Realty Mogul raises 9 million, uh, Realty Shares raises 20 million, etc. And uh, that was just the dinner on the final evening as well. So an incredible experience, a huge amount, and we have recorded the entire uh, session because there was some incredible discussions that are going to be very, very valuable to where this company is going. And the reason we did it actually was that we, like I explained to you, it was time to, to get a new board. And so the proposal with the new board, it's not been finalized yet, but the proposal with the new board is that the, in Caraco, which effectively is representing the wealth partners and, and all the shareholders, the board as it stands is Dolph as president, um, Henny, Scott, and Lowe. So that will remain, and, and Dolph will be um, you know, on that board and, and a curator of that board. And then in Hong Kong, uh, which is the international operational side. Uh, Henny will be the chairman, and what is proposed is Justin Clark, uh, Peter Fenstra, Martin Freeman, Paul Nadira, Scott Picken, and Lo For Yun. And the reason being is that uh, Henny is strong on property. Justin Clark is very strong on portals and um, and funding. He's raised eighty million dollars in funding himself for his platforms across Africa. Uh, Peter Fenstra is you know, world class in terms of property. And also connected with some of the most uh, powerful business people in Australia uh, and South Africa, and in Europe. And then Martin Freeman, I think I've explained. But on the fintech side and funding, uh, Paul Nadera is obviously very much platforms, but also as a global leader in compliance. And then really the CEO and the CFO in terms of the board. And then as advisors, Bill Palladino, uh, Dan Daniel Besaidnot, uh, Yaku Machio, uh, Jay. And Yako Fanika. Um, there are a couple of others that uh, we're talking to, but at the moment, um, you know, we, we just need to finalise it. So this is the proposed board. We will be uh, looking to get this finalised. We um, literally Henny and I said they're all keen to get involved, which is fantastic news. I mean, I think if we got to Sunday night and they were like, "No, we're not keen. We don't really think this is a good idea." Uh, they were the complete opposite. They were like, "This is amazing. Um, let's put cash in. Let's get involved. Let's make this happen." 
and um, and which is really really exciting. And so we just we actually sent them all a proposal this morning. Uh, Peter's already um, agreed to it, and I um, I'm just trying to finalise everything with uh, with all of them. So as soon as I've got that finalised, I'll, I'll let everyone know. Why is it important to have a really world class board with a balance between fintech, uh, well basically technology and property? Well, we, we're very much going to the institutionals now. We understand the straight curve. Many of you should have seen this before in terms of any exponential you know, technology company has to go through an investment phase, then it goes through a catch up phase, and then it goes blue sky. And we really are you know, going to that next level now in terms of the institutional level. And for them, they need to be able to see a world-class board balanced across the different areas. As you know, we've, we've really you know, copied uh, Salesforce's model back in 99 when they started. They told that it was a useless model, it never worked, they couldn't get any VC funding, and yet today they're the 14th biggest technology company in the world. And uh, by 2004, so literally five years later, they were, they were a billion, you know, billion dollar company. And it was all started through their design partners, which is exactly the same as our wealth partners, and, and building out that engagement and, and, and them all winning uh, together in terms of the process. So I want to take a step back and remind you, there's three things that technology does whenever it comes to a space. So you take any of these companies, and whenever they've come to a space, there's three things they do. Can anyone tell me what they are? Okay, just while I, I'm seeing if anyone types here, um, Andrew said, surely we need to maintain our marketing spend and ultimately increase it to get momentum going. 100% Andrew, it's very much a focus. I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, Pierre said, um, I feel that I can attract more new clients if I can show them figures, yields of previous investors. Will this be possible as part of marketing materials? So that's exactly what I'm talking about with case studies and testimonials, Pierre, uh, and very much something we want to focus on in terms of social proofing and trust. And uh, Mandy, uh, please get all of Milani. So, okay, some of the things they disrupt, they simplify and steam try and they digitize. So, uh, yeah, so I always say there's, there's, oops, sorry, there's three things that uh, they do. Firstly, they cut the costs. Secondly, they cut out the middlemen. And thirdly, they effectively increase the trust, the transparency, and the accessibility. And that is why they create such disruption and such value. And so, when you look at property, there's already a number of platforms that have disrupted different property segments. All of them are billion dollar companies, all of them within less than seven years, and they all had an X. So what does an X mean? Well, an X means that, you know, in Airbnb it's the number of beds, in Uber it's the number of car rides. Well, our X is our number of transactions, and that's why it's so important for us to be increasing our number of transactions, decreasing our minimum investment, increasing the selection and the availability of opportunities on the platform. I've shown a few of you this before and I just want to go back to it to keep you updated. So the big posters that we had up on the wall was back in 2014, March, when Realty Mogul raised $9 million in first Series A in the space. Then in uh, April, uh, Fundrise actually raised $31 million for a valuation of over $100 million back in April of 2014. They've recently just put out communication about, uh, about IPOing themselves. Uh, they actually showed it was quite interesting in terms of the growth phase. So in terms of saying, you know, this is where they are, and then you know, scale is Uber and Airbnb, and then the profit phase. And it's really interesting because you know, I think uh, we're in a very similar stage. What's fascinating is that in, I don't know how long it was because by the time I tried to get in, they had already closed it out, so it was literally a couple of days. And uh, they had $93.2 million committed uh, from 8,327 users. Pretty amazing, eh? So you can imagine their valuation now, if you work on generally, you know, the amount of capital raised being in the region of 20 to 25%, their valuation now is well pushing over uh, 250, 300. I, I don't know. We've got the prospectus. We still need to do all the research. I could be wrong, actually, and if anyone knows, I'm happy to be told. But it's fascinating to see, um, you know, where this is going, and I mean, that's just the capital raised on the IPO, 
and you can see what's happening with the valuation. So it's, this is very good for market comparables. Um, Property Partner, which is a UK-based one, they raised $27 million in Series A. And if you look here in terms of their revenues, they as minimum investments, 50 pounds. They make money through the rental income, and they've also got a marketplace. And when you look at their revenues, they've earned about a million dollars in revenue, and they were valued at $82 million uh, when, when they got their Series A. And then lastly, prop, uh, co-assets, it's on the um, ASX. This one's quite an interesting one. They listed on the ASX for $85 million. The total revenue is about 1.7. But uh, Kevin actually did some interesting research. Since they listed, their share price has gone down. So the valuation has obviously gone down, which is, which is really interesting. Uh, Dolphin, myself, actually know Getty Go, so I'm going to get hold of him and find out what that's all about uh, in, terms of, in terms of where they're at. Although it does remind me of a story when my, when my, my nephew told me about, or me and my uncle, about why we, why we should buy in Facebook when he was about I don't know, 11, 12, 13. And you know, his father was a very successful stockbroker, and he was like, no, nah, man, it's rubbish, it's overvalued. And I said to him, just my angels, what were the shares at the time, Bill? And I, you know, they were like $20, and they're now like $300. That's <laughs> so, quite, a, quite a funny story. Stock markets often don't understand where, where companies are going. So when you look at the metrics here, these are you know, the, the, the updated numbers in terms of what you're looking at. So you know, in terms of the users between uh, Realty Mogul, uh, Fundrise Realty Mogul, Property Partner, Co-Assets, and Wealth Migrate. So you can see one of the things we've really got to do is work on getting our users up. Um, the reason the users were so much lower is because with a minimum investment of $100,000, you're obviously reaching a much, much smaller part of the market. But what's fascinating when you look at the equity through platform, you know, if you take Fundrise, with all that money in Series A and underwriting, they've done about $70 million, and we've done $56.4 million. So it's incredible the results that we've achieved with, with, with no um, institutional funding. And then, I'm not really going to bore you with this, this was an external valuation that was done on the company back in March of 2015, and the guy actually valued us at $60 million. I, um, it's just interesting, we, you know, obviously we take it into account, but you'll know as all of you as Wealth Partners, none of you have bought at a $60 million valuation, uh, because we believe on leaving meat on the bone and, and letting everyone win. But this is what I found fascinating. So the work that we did here was looking at what were their numbers when they, when they got their Series A and based on the valuations. And so if you look at the transactions here, you can actually see that um, in terms of Fundrise, they were effectively about 1,000 transactions. The minimum investment was $100. They had done about $15 million through their platform. I don't know their revenue. They raised $31 million in Series A, and their pre-capital valuation was $77 million. Realty Mogul, uh, minimum investment was five thousand fourteen million dollars. Uh, Series A at nine million. I don't know what their um, their valuation was at that stage, but I do know at Series B it was one hundred and forty five million dollars in twenty fifteen. And then Property Partner. So you can see they've uh, done a lot more transactions, but the but but their minimum transaction is fifty pounds, and uh, their equity was actually quite a lot higher. So it was twenty seven uh, million, and um, their revenue was one million. And their Series A was 27 million, but their valuation was 82 million. And then Coassets was also, you can see their revenue, uh, sorry, their equity about 43, their revenue about 1.9, and their valuation in dollars is about 85 million. And like I said, that, that share price has come down now um, a little bit. But you know, what's interesting for us is that we've done less transactions. Um, if you remember, we only we were at 100,000 about six months ago. We dropped to $10,000, and so we were we had much higher minimums, which is why our equity is so much higher. Um, our revenue is even higher, um, but there really needs to be a focus now to move more and more to platform, more and more in terms of lower investments, more and more transactions, and that's why increasing the users is also significantly important. So that's uh, Pierre. Hopefully, answers your question. And in my opinion, when you look at all of them. Between Patchland, Asset Avenue, Realty Shares, with the amount of equity in Series A, um, you know we're, they're all around the kind of 80 million uh, dollar mark, and so you know we really want to focus on getting up these transactions, and um, and 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 there's no reason why we shouldn't be in that same ballpark. So we sat at the end of last year, and I think I uh, explained this uh, before, but there were kind of two strategies. One was where we do a five million dollar raise, and then a 15 million dollar raise later in the year. Uh, or you know early next year, 
which will allow us to kind of really grow, you know, and uh, but but not necessarily you know sell too much of the company. And then the other strategy was just do one tranche at 20 million, which is really for China and America. They don't really like to get out of bed for less than 20 million dollars. And you know, in terms of the the, the, the growth and, and where we're looking at, you know, from an exit perspective. We're looking at a liquidity event, which is a modern day liquidity event like it's happening in Uber, Airbnb, uh, Tesla, and, and numerous other billion dollar companies. You list in a traditional IPO. You effectively do a digital marketplace list, which is where it's kind of what, IP, what uh, Fundrise is doing. They're not worrying about going to the New York Stock Exchange. And then you do a strategic sale to an investment bank you know, and or um, you know, a company like that. Um, and then I think you can see here, um, you know, five to eight years on a uh, to 10x capital balance sheet wealth in real estate starts in about three years, actually coming to fruition, and dividends in about five years. Okay, so in terms of creating the marketplace, this is extremely important for people to understand. We really want to increase now the focus and spend on marketing and deal flow, and the marketplace rollout. So the in-country rollout, so different countries around uh, around the world, and we want to decrease the minimum investment. By doing that, we will get a lot more people through the platform, which is what we need to do to be a digital marketplace. So the funding plan that we effectively came up with at the last board meeting in October that was signed off was, uh, was, was approved, was effectively a tranche at around a $30 million valuation in, uh, in, um, in December. Uh, that was largely um, you know, taken up and, and, and done. Then, uh, then in February to do the, the, the other three, which takes us to the five, at around three dollars a share, and then the fifteen million dollars later in the year, once we've got those users and traction numbers up, and you know closer to the eighty million dollars or around six dollars a share, and then the underwriting fund, the aim is to get around a hundred million dollars, and you know that's where someone like Peter Fenster can be instrumental in that, and I will explain that now. So just in terms of the funding docs, if you haven't uh, seen the funding docs, I um, I would. Uh, I would uh, just ask to see them. We can send them to you. So just write funding docs. I sat with one of the wealth partners today, uh, Anthony, that uh, is the owner of Singular Systems, and I was actually running through this all. So I'm going to be updating this after this weekend. But this just really gives you an idea of how those KPIs tie together with with where we're at, with where the projections are. And you can see here in terms of this is just a one-page overview of who we are. You can see our, our financials. You can see the breakdown of, of, of the spend with regards to the $5 million and, and how it would be um, deployed. And then if you look here under an extra one, you know, this is really how we make money because what the funding guys want to know is, you know, okay, if you do one deal, you make 10 bucks. Well, if you do 10 deals, then you make 100 bucks. Um, so that's kind of the maths behind that. And then you go to uh, it an extra two. And this is where it gets really important. So what we did in terms of our, our plan for 2017 was to have a low road, a medium road, and a high road. Now the low road is if the funding continued at a very similar level to where it was in 2016. And the high road obviously was if we got in funding. So you can see the funding here around $2.5 million. The medium road is somewhere in the middle, and the high road is call it $7.5 million. And you can see the number of deals that we want to do. You can see the overheads. Um, in terms of where we're at, you can see the EBITDA, and you can also see the revenue. So what's interesting for me is that on the low road, uh, we're due to be over $3 million this year and really starting to get to break-even point. And on the high road, we, we, we're north of $8 million. Now at a 10x valuation, you know, 10x re revenue, etc., you know, you're well over um, you know, those, those valuation numbers I was talking about. What's also important if you look here, you can see the number of transactions that are 40,000. So if you remember going back to our KPIs, the average transaction at the moment is $75,000. We want to get that down to 40, and you can see the numbers there, and also the number of equity. So you know, if we go the low road, it's about 600 odd uh, transactions uh, in for the year of 2017, and if we go the high road, it's over 2,000. And then uh, you know, in terms of 2018, we've done the same thing. So you can see here the number of transactions, and now it's up to 5,000. And then 2019, you can see it's up to 30,000, but the but the average transaction is $10,000. Um, so it's getting much much lower. And you can see now the revenue uh, by this stage is around $37 million. Now why this is relevant is that this becomes a bit more of a thumbsuck, 
but effectively it gives you a projection. So we've got the low road, the medium road, and the high road over the 10-year period. So it takes the exact same numbers for 2017, 2018, and 2019, and it just projects them forward. And what's interesting is that you can see the reason these are in yellow is that actually the once the company goes over $100 million in revenue, and, and you can just see the timing um, because once it kind of is doing $100 million in revenue plus, it's very much a billion dollar company. And so it's, you know, that, that, that's what's relevant there. And I tried to, obviously it's a bit of a guesstimation, but I tried to look at what the share value would be um, in terms of, you know, per year based on revenue and, 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 and you know, other things. So it just gives people an indication. So just before I move on there, any questions around uh, this? Because these numbers are very, very important because obviously they not only give you insight into your investments and where we're going, but they also give us you insight into where we go, uh, you know, where we're going, and and why the KPIs are so important to be able to track and measure whether we're on track, etc. So if people are interested in the funding docs, just just type in their funding docs and and uh, we'll send them to you. And if you're watching the recording, um, you know, just uh, just get all of us, and we'll, we'll send uh, we'll send you know, we'll create one email with all the links uh, to all the relevant stuff. So in terms of looking here, so I don't see any strategies. Oh, sorry, was there actually a question there? Let me just check what I saw. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think again on the funding docs, we'll we'll send them once we've updated them, because um, literally from this weekend, um, they're, they're pretty much not going to change. Usually, it's, I just want to update the front page uh, based on this weekend. So really, from a funding perspective, obviously to date, as you know, we've had the wealth partners. Uh, we've really been actively engaging now. Uh, with platform partners, which affects our property companies, so exactly what Fundrise and Realty Mogul did, which was bringing on property partners. So, if you remember what um, what Willem said, there's a number of property developers and funds that are actually reaching out to you know consulting firms because they know technology is coming to the space. They know they're you know going to have trouble if they don't do something about it. And you know what better thing than to actually you know talk to a uh, company that, that already understands that they need to be dealing with tech companies and you know they all do it through partnership. And then obviously you've got the institutional strategic investors, uh, whether they're VC or investment banks. And then finally the last one is, is whether we actually crowdfund ourselves, IPO ourselves in a similar way to, to what uh, Fundrise are doing. You know, there's a re really big part of me that um, you know, I'd really like to kind of go this route because very much like Salesforce, it, it completely is antithesis, and it, it means that we continue to to eat our own, uh, you know, soup or you know, you know, read our own story, if you want to call it that, which is allowing you know everyone to participate in, in creating global wealth. And um, so it's interesting, you know, that that part of the strategies in terms of in terms of where we're going. So if you remember, this is uh, something for all the wealth partners, the six major areas to the business. If you want to, you know, get a copy of our collaborative economy, you know. You know, what I'd really ask you to do is take a look at this. There's six areas, and as a wealth partner, you know, the whole reason was never to be a VC or an angel investor, you know, but you equally didn't want a job. But you know, these are the areas um, that people are focusing on. And if you go on the community platform, you know, these are the six areas that Kevin's created, and, and people can, you know, I really ask you to start, you know, forming communities and, and co creating together uh, in terms of where we're at. And so, in terms of wealth partners today, it's been $7.6 million invested. And really, from a platform partner's perspective, the different uh, com countries that we've approached, so in the USA, we've approached the three guys that we've been working with for a long time. All of them are interested. The PPA group is actually committed uh, to $200,000 investment now and a further $200,000 a couple of months later. Um, it, and we're still engaging with Gold Coast and SG Properties. In Oz, the long life guys that you might have met in October, and then in South Africa, um, you know I've, I've been talking to Rawson, one of the better developers, F, FWJK, uh, Tongard Hewlett. We haven't spoken to Redefine or Growth Point uh, or Atterbury for that matter, but I put them on the board because now that Peter Fenstra is involved, you know he has direct access. So like today, it was quite funny when I was in his office and we agreed, you know how he's going to be joining the board and everything else. He said, oh, you know, Louis van der Vaart is, you know, one of my, you know, great friends. Um, would you like to meet him? I was like, of course I'd like to meet him. Atterbury is one of the most successful developers in the country. They've got Ad Fund. I mean, they could literally do the underwriting fund on their own. I was like, oh, no problem. I'll phone him off this meeting and set up a meeting for you guys. So, I mean, that's exactly, you know, the type of thing that, uh, that you want to be you know, dealing with. And then on the institutional partners, I'm not going to go into everyone uh, personally. 
but there's a number of um, you know, different parties that, that we've been dealing with um, in the USA, in, uh, in the UK, in China. So this guy John Au is, is uh, you know, um, close to our China team there and really being able to engage both in Hong Kong and China. In Dubai, I'm off to Dubai in two weeks. We've got a very good guy there on the ground called Derek and uh, there's an organization there called Nasiba. And then in Israel, um, there's a group called Our Crowd, Hong Kong, and then South Africa. And so in all these areas, there's people on the ground that already have relationships. In this space with institutional funders, you don't call cold call people. It doesn't work like that. The big mistake I made last year was relying on third-party people. So these guys give you introductions, uh, but we don't need a middleman between us and the, and the financiers, so we deal with it directly. And we've had really good success with RMI in South Africa. Um, really, really, you know, chuffed when, when we had the meeting last week with Lo and I. They said they haven't seen a team with this caliber at this level yet in South Africa, which was really, really awesome. And but we had passed their investment committee's first round due diligence, and we actually have to submit all the documentation uh, by Monday for the second round due diligence um, in terms of uh, them getting involved. They, they're probably not going to come on. As a, as a large strategic investor, but maybe dip their toe to get started. Although I do believe with um, a couple of the board appointments that we've just made over the last couple of days, that could very much be changing. Um, Investec, we've, we've had a couple of conversations with, but again, with, um, you know, with the, Peters, the Peters coming on board, you know, that basically, you know, this, is, this is a different level now. And uh, NASPERS and WeChat, you know, Bill Palladino used to work at NASPERS, uh, literally, of course, Becker was his, his boss. And so, you know, he's going to um, put me in contact with the right people that actually run the 10 cent investment for us and ultimately, you know, put us in contact with the right people at WeChat in China. Um, and then Genesis and the Buffett Group, both through Martin Freeman. And then just my interest on the VC side, we have met with two of them, Grovest and Angel Hub. From experience, we've we found that their funds are quite small. You know, their, their entire VC fund is generally the one was 30 million rand and the other one was 60 million rand, 68 million to be exact. You know, it's less money that, than we need in terms of the entire fund. <laughs> so we're only really dealing with, with a few of the players here that have the ability to participate. I am going to do a roadshow in the US, UK and China um, after Dubai but, um, and obviously Hong Kong as well. But um, we have actually got you know, quite good traction in South Africa. And so I'm, I'm just putting on hold a little bit until we get some of those users and um, and transaction numbers up. And then in terms of crowdfunding ourselves, obviously the, the strategy, it would take six months. And, and the nice thing is we could also combine it with a, you know, with, with a you know, strategic uh, funder as well. And then lastly, the RPO, and quite frankly, I don't know anything about that um, other than what uh, literally Fundrise sent out last week. We did download, Paul Madeira managed to download the perspectives, but I haven't seen it yet. So I'm not quite sure how it works um, in terms of what they've done. Okay. So when we had the, um, the two, the, the people away for the whole weekend, and I really kind of listened for the first day and kept, we you know, really kept quite quiet. The whole leadership team, or not the whole leadership team, a couple of the leadership team players actually presented on different areas of the business. So platform, funding, um, finance, uh, digital, uh, marketplace expansion, uh, team and culture, um, and, and the PMO office. And there was lots of opinions and discussions and debates. And on Sunday morning, you know, I really kind of summed it up for people. And I said, there's two options. There's option A and option B. Neither option is right or wrong, but they're fundamentally different and you fundamentally play a very different game um, if you're playing option A or option B. So I dialed that down a little bit and I said, option A is private equity. It focuses on high net worth individuals. It builds a large uh, sales force of, of, of uh, effectively sales people that can be out there on the front line. It focuses all on revenue. It's about local and linear and, and all about due diligence and quality of projects. So you don't have lots of projects. You have one project at a time, very much like a private equity firm uh, does. And to do that, you know, we, if we're going option A, we would uh, effectively you know, stop the platform development, you know, focus very heavily on hiring a CMO. You know, all money needs to go into marketing. You know, grow the sales force, focus on revenue, and, and really just focus on South Africa. Why worry about global? We effectively could be a private equity firm in South Africa. Option B was uh, was was different. It's effectively a marketplace. It's where we focus on the 99%, so not the top 1%, but 
the, we really build out the platform with the UX, the user experience, the UI, the user interface. Um, from a sales support perspective, rather than having um, a bunch of you know 50 plus very experienced kind of financial planners uh, running around the country and trying to do direct one-on-one -on -one sales, you actually have a much younger uh, sales team that can embrace the technology and interface between the clients and the technology. You focus on users and engagement. You focus on global and exponential. You focus on diversity, so that's having multiple products. And maybe rather than having a central due diligence hub in Pretoria, you look at, at systems like crowd, crowd diligence. Think of uh, like the Wikipedia for, for due diligence and how you could actually look to, to really be able to, to scale with that. And to do that, you know, if you want to continue to go that route, you need to stop everything else to create the marketplace. So many of you saw the marketplace designs that Jay shared in October. Many of you are involved in building out uh, the concepts. If you weren't, you know, reach out to us and say marketplace um, because we're literally finalizing those now and we want to get into development as soon as possible um, in terms of version 5. You know, the budget, um, including marketing, needs to go into the platform over the next two months to really get that version 5 of the marketplace built and really with a focus on social proofing, so very much like Airbnb uh, and Uber and many of the other sites. You build trust through social proofing. Um, you only really have the current uh, projects and, and um, you know, for the next uh, two, two, three months. And while you're doing that, you're really bringing on lots of new projects to be able to create the marketplace. The reason funding is written in capital letters is you have to have funding. <laughs> it's not possible to grow the business without, without funding. Uh, global expansion, so what I mean by that is that you know, we've currently got people or requests from Dubai, India, um, New Zealand, Canada, uh, Pakistan, and I think Malaysia. Um, there's eight countries that have asked to roll out our platform in those countries. Yaku is really, very much driving that model in an almost franchise way. Um, and you know, our philosophy is why can we not expand and literally put down a footprint globally now that the platform's up and the, and the systems are in place and we roll it out you know, one country after another. It all comes down to having quality partners on the ground. And then the digital products, you know, it's, it's, it's about not just about having physical products but about having digital products and you know, things like the inner circle, etc. Our X is investors. Um, you know, we want to be very clear on, on, on what we're charging through the platform. I still suggest that it should be a flat 3%. And um, just like an Airbnb, it creates complete transparency. Um, it needs to be all about the customer experience, raving fans, and solving the greatest challenges uh, for clients. Um, you do marketing through education. Um, and then once you've built out the marketplace, just like Airbnb, once you've got all the clients in one place, you then actually charge developers and sponsors and you know, people who want to bring the property to the platform. So they have packages like silver, gold, and, and, and platinum. And you actually, your revenue streams grow on the other side of the fence and you keep very transparent for the users so they know exactly what they're getting. And then lastly, you know, if you're going the marketplace route, you, you buy into the vision, you know, how can we make investing as simple as a one dollar investment with a swipe of the finger? And so as a matter of interest, before I move on, uh, which one do you think we should be playing? Uh, option A or option B? <laughs> just interested in everyone's opinions. So I can see everyone says option A, so we're obviously going to have to shut down the platform and uh, you know, just, uh, just kind of go option A. It was quite interesting you know, when we were doing this because Justin Clark asked the question, he goes, just my interest, what, you know, take, take uh, five years from now, what would be the valuation of option A? You know, if it was running smoothly and efficiently, and we very much looked at it like the Sentinel company, so for those of you who met Warren Everett in October, we said, you know, it's an amazing company. It's got about 600 investors, raised about $20 million a project in 24 hours. But when you, when you look at it, it would purely be on profit times PE. And we, we, we figured it would probably be about a $40 million company. Uh, option B, well, you know, if you're a marketplace, uh, there's, there's absolutely no reason why this can't be a unicorn. And, uh, you know, Justin was quite funny. He was like, so why are we talking about this? <laughs> so uh, just, just interesting. And the reason I'm bringing it up, is both for the wealth partners and uh, 
for a lot of the team uh, that are on that are on board that are also wild partners. Repetition is the mother of skill. Yeah. But uh, you know, everyone says option B, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, but they need to know what the differences are, and um, in terms of in terms of what it actually physically means. So the reason I'm asking you kind of to to write down what you think is because it just makes you think about it rather than just make it you know our problem. And then what was fascinating is that Justin Clark, who just by the way has 1.7 million unique users come to private property in South Africa every single month. Um, so I mean they literally deal with people in the hundreds of thousands and actually millions. So he knows how to build a platform better than anyone I've ever met. And he said it's very simple. There's three things you have to do to, to succeed at being a platform. You need selection. He calls this the golden triangle. So that means you've got to have lots of properties. You can't come to Wealth Migrate and have one property. It's like going to a supermarket and there's one bottle of Valpro water. If you don't like it, tough. <laughs> that's what it is. Then you've got to build trust. So that's all about the social proofing. That's all about uh, what Alibaba's done in terms of building up the, the credibility of the partners. It's all about the investors talking about their experiences, sharing, sharing their experiences, social proofing uh, the partners, social proofing their investments, um, testimonials, videos, guys, well partners. If you think we're doing a good job, please talk about it and, and give it to us so we can put it on the platform and social proof it. And if you think we're doing a bad job, tell us as well. Um, tell us how we can improve because for me, transparency and trust is built by authenticity. And then lastly is convenience. Make it really easy. You know, think about the dream. As simple as one dollar from a swipe of a finger. And um, you know, that's when uh, Bill Palladino spoke a lot about the minimum viable shopping experience. And, really focusing on that convenience. So you can see here, e-commerce, lots of properties, and social proofing. You literally said, focus on those things, three things, you'll succeed. Okay, so a couple of other things that I just wanted to bring you up from the weekend. Uh, we started with option A and option B. We actually need to focus over the next quarter on users and not revenue. That doesn't necessarily mean we're not um, continuing to grow the revenue of the business, but Justin actually said, if you grow your revenue too quickly, then the institutional uh, funding guys will look at you as a private equity firm and not as a platform, because platform needs to grow users. So the focus really needs to be on the users and, and where we're going. And our target by the end of March is to be 10,000 plus users on the platform. Any help from the wealth partners would be greatly appreciated. The second thing we need to do is get stock and selection. So our aim is to have a minimum of 10 properties. Uh, on the platform, um, Michiel and Vili and, and uh, Henny are going to work on that as quickly as possible. Henny is going to bring uh, some of his buildings. Peter Fencher is going to bring some of his buildings. I'm going to bring some of uh, my UK properties. And um, so if any of you want to bring any of your properties, so they're existing properties, they're great properties. I don't want to sell, but I'm happy to let people invest and, and take some equity out. And, and now whether that's in South Africa, Australia, England or America, it actually creates uh, um, you know, more variety on the platform. And what's fantastic is that they've also got um, track records of performance. So the next thing was the battle plan. And this is where it gets quite exciting, guys. So, so they, we were pretty much set a target by, uh, by effectively these proposed new board members. And then some of the leadership team stayed behind on Monday to say, OK, how are we actually going to implement? There's no point in talking about it. How are we actually going to do it? So we came up with a battle plan. And we decided to have like a Black Friday like singles day. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me just quickly show you there. Uh, Singles Day is the biggest uh, uh, online shopping event in the world. And basically, it's just a random day where Alibaba, you know, uh, they have all these discounts on Alibaba. And last year, in a 24 hour period, they had $17.8 billion of um, uh, gross merchandise. Uh, what is this? And $14.3 billion, um, you know, in terms of sales, et cetera. So just in terms of it, so go, go Google it if you, want to, if you want to understand it. And Black Friday, I think if you do or don't know, is the e-commerce uh, version of that in, um, in, in America. So we, we decided to, to have uh, a day. It's going to be the 3rd of March uh, when we're going to launch the South African platform. And what, what I learned from a very good video about Jack Ma, and if you want that video from Jack Ma, I have shared it on the Exponential uh, WhatsApp group. But if you do want it, just type in there, Jack Ma. Amazing story of how they built Alibaba from nothing. And there's so many parallels with Wealth Migrate. 
But um, he said, just took a random day. They, called, they came up with a name. They called it Singles Day. And today it's the biggest shopping event in the world. Um, so my question to you as Wealth Partners is uh, give us some names, guys. You know, it's the South African platform launch. But there's obviously going to be UK property on there. There's going to be American property on there. There's going to be Australian property on there. And so, you know, think about if on the 3rd of March we could come up with a worldwide uh, name where people could, uh, you know, in a 24-hour period. Um, so I'm, I'm fascinated. This is what's called uh, uh, crowdsourcing. <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's use all your brilliance and uh, help us come up with a, with a great name because uh, Jay and, and, and the marketing team are really working on this. And so if you've got any great ideas, you know, hit us with them. And uh, because our intention is to do a big song and dance on the 3rd of March, launch the South African platform, and really let people know that, that it exists. Um, I just want to look here, uh, what's the definition of a user? When does someone become a user? So uh, Greg, uh, sorry, I explained a little bit earlier. A lead is when you've got a name, an email address, or a phone number. A user is once you're on the platform, so once you're registered on the platform. Uh, Valdi says, I've got properties. Um, so yeah, uh, that's, that's perfect. That's exactly what we're talking about, Valdi, in terms of even on the residential side, and um, you know, either doing individual properties or even looking at it from a, from a REIT uh, type perspective like we spoke about. Um, yeah, um, Pierre, in terms of how this will work on the property side, we're not 100% sure yet. <laughs> we're working on it. Remember, exponential organizations is all about experimentation. We need stock. It's going to take time to get uh, good quality stock out of external resources. So, you know, the logic was, well, why don't we look internally? And, and Martin Freeman really challenged us on it. He said, you guys all have access to good quality stock. You are in good quality stock. Why don't you make it available to investors and create selection on the platform? Um, and then, you know, we are launching, I'm going to come to that uh, now, but we're launching zero to one, and the minimum investment is a thousand rand. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're pretty much almost there at $100, but the minimum investment is going to be a thousand rand uh, in terms of where we actually uh, can get to. But I'm going to talk about that. And then Andrew said, can I suggest that we push all our partners to organize a testimonial to the portal? We need to add our voices. Uh, Andrew, I'm very much uh, endorsing that. I really, we, uh, we really now need to focus on social proofing. Coming back to that triangle of trust, selection, uh, trust, and uh, convenience. So the convenience, we'll figure out that out from the technology perspective. We're launching a next version now that's going to have all the e-commerce um, functionality with PayPal and Bitcoin. But uh, when it comes to social proofing and selection, you know, that's, as a shareholder within this group, it's within all our interests to make that happen. And then uh, just in terms of battle plan, on the funding side, I thought you'd be really interested. Um, a number of the board members, the new board members, have committed to actually put in capital um, they also committed on the basis that Henny and I put in capital. So Henny and I committed to put in $125,000 each um, at the same uh, share price, at the current share price. And uh, a number of team members have also committed um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of investing. So um, it's actually really, really, um, I've got huge gratitude in, in, in that because people are putting their money where their mouth is. And then, as I said to you about RMI, they are going to investment committee level. It's actually Henny's idea that um, we go back to RMI and say, listen, you know, we've actually invested you know, more than a million dollars ourselves just at a board level and a leadership team level. Uh, why don't you match us uh, one for one at the same share price? And you know, we've literally put our money in at that share price. So you can't uh, um, uh, challenge us on, on valuations, et cetera, et cetera. So Henny, Henny teaching me how to turn, turn, uh, <laughs> turn the negotiation around. And, uh, and then the plan for February, March, and April. Sorry, guys, I know this is a long update, but there's lots to share. Um, so I really mentioned it. We're launching Zero to One. So if you go on the platform, it's the tallest uh, building in Cape Town. It's going to be one of the most iconic buildings in Africa. What I find fascinating about this guy is that he's very similar to Sentinel. He's got about 600 investors. He's been doing projects for over 10 years. And to invest with him, you know, you can't go and buy units, etc. You've got to be a really high net worth individual. You need about two and a half million dollars, uh, sorry, two and a half million rand cash, and you need the bank to be able to write you a bank guarantee check on the debt for another seven and a half million rand. So you need you need all up about ten million rand, you know, liquid to participate. And through our platform, they're really excited about crowdfunding. They actually saw uh, me talk at Sapoa two years ago on crowdfunding, 
Uh, they then contacted Kevin and between Kevin and and I think Ricky and uh, and Yaku. Um, they've all played an instrumental part in getting the guys on board. But guys, you know, literally what was going to only be available to people that used to have 10 million rand plus and they're earning 50 percent plus returns per year is now going to be available to people from a thousand rand. Now I know if I could hear you all clapping, you would be standing on your feet right now and clapping and clapping and clapping because this is how the world is going to change. This is how we're going to solve the greatest challenge on the planet by giving ordinary people access to what previously only the very wealthy could invest in. We're going to be building out the sharing ability. So Cliff and the technology team, uh, we're going to actually be launching. So with the launch of Zero One, we're going to be giving away an apartment. So anyone that actually registers as a user on the platform will go in a draw to win an apartment in Zero to One. And if anyone shares to their friends, so JP's here in the office with me. If I've got a friend and I send it to JP and I've already registered, I'll get a coupon. I can share it with JP. And if he registers, he'll go in the draw, but I'll get two chances to win them. So, you know, people can open up their whole address books and send it to everyone and say, hey, who wants to get in the draw to win an apartment in the highest, most iconic residential building in the center of Cape Town? And so uh, Cliff will be building that out in February. Um, we're going to be having wild partner dinners. Um, so I ask you to invite your guests. And uh, we're going to be doing it in the evening in KZN on the 28th of February. We're going to be doing it in Joburg on the 1st of March. We're going to be doing it in Cape Town on the 2nd of March. And that's going to be like a VIP kind of launch um, with the major e-commerce exponential South African launch with a name still to be decided by the Wealth Partner community. I look forward to all your fantastic ideas happening on the uh, Friday the 3rd. And that's the day that, uh, that uh, you know, from that day, anyone that is effectively a user or signs up will be able to go in the draw uh, to win an apartment. Also, from that day, anyone that invests um, on the platform will actually be given 100 grand extra. And our, and our aim is to get, uh, well, that's, uh, that's for the first 10,000, uh, just limiting our downside. But our aim is to not only increase our users, but also increase our investors so we can really see that traction going in the right direction. And so, um, and then we're going to give away the apartment on the 27th of April. So we're going to give ourselves about however long that is, eight weeks, to really have that viral effect, let the press have a field day, let all of you get hold of all your friends and family. And, um, and then you might notice that the 27th of April is a public holiday. It is called Freedom Day, and Jay had a great idea. Um, the whole campaign is about making someone a millionaire because on that day someone is going to win an apartment that's worth more than a million rand. So it's about making everyone a millionaire. And then just some other dates uh, that might be of interest to you is that we've organized a wealth weekend uh, from the 20, what is that, 23rd to the 26th of June. It'll probably be in the Joburg, Pretoria area. Um, we will be having our live AGM, although we will stream it for those that can't make it. And we're also going to have partners out from the USA. So Monty and his team from PPA are going to be out, I think. I think uh, Michiel said uh, Paul from, from the medical side as well, and also partners from Australia. So the partners is still a work in progress, but the weekend is definitely happening on those dates. And then lastly, I thought you might be interested, um, myself and um, Reorient, which is the, um, which is the, uh, the platform, the e-commerce platform for Alibaba, their CEO, uh, Ting Li, um, the product, um, the head of product for, for Crowdcube, which is the biggest equity crowdfunding platform in England, and um, a writer for Bloomberg is, uh, have been invited uh, to a panel at South by Southwest on the 11th of March where we are talking about the globalization of finance. So we really, um, you know, from an esteemed perspective, for the, pl for the company, um, we really are, you know, uh, hanging in the, what's it, hanging in the company of, of giants. Um, so in terms of just some of the next steps, I am nearly finished and then I can answer any questions I haven't uh, been through, is that um, from my side, it, it really, you know, this week I was completely humble, had complete sincere gratitude. We didn't pay these people anything. They came and gave up, you know, for half of Friday, or for most of them actually, the whole of Friday by the time I traveled there, um, the whole of Saturday, the whole of Sunday, uh, all of them away from their families, and then they went back on Monday. So. You know, really, on behalf of the Wealth Partner community, 
the, the gratitude I've got for the Wealth Partner community, for, for what we built, for where we are, for the mission on what we're trying to achieve. It's really getting world-class people to now fly all over the world to come and be part of this. And you know, I think when you get five, five out of five of them at the end going, I'm in, and you know, that, that's truly, truly exciting. Um, so in the next couple of days, uh, and hopefully not weeks, but the next couple of days, it's really to finalize the formation of the new board and to hold the first board meeting um, towards the end of February, um, or, or maybe actually after the launch. I think we've got enough on our hands before the launch. Um, so that'll probably be in March. And then I mean, I'm trying to get the board finalized before Monday so I can tell RMI with confidence, because I've got verbal commitments, but I want to have written commitments that that's all in place. Um, start building version five of the marketplace. This is absolutely critical. Um, we, we, we have to have the capital to, to you know, get the developers um, building out the marketplace um, so that we can get a version five of the marketplace um, live. And then the testimonials and the case studies, you know, this is endorsing what Andrew Cooper was saying. Guys, we, we need your help now. Um, you know, we need to talk about case studies. We need to talk about testimonials. I really don't mind if you talk about things that went wrong. You know, Martin Freeman talks about how he had a house and, you know, there, there, there was no tenant in the house in America. And we, you know, we really, you know, went to the ends of the world to get it fixed. Then he had his bank account closed down twice and what we did to solve that problem. And he said, because of us solving those problems, he's now a complete raving fan. So I don't mind you talking about problems and what the team's done to, to solve those problems. I believe it's all about authenticity. Um, so if you want to write something, the best is a video. Um, and we really, you know, why we need that version five of the digital marketplace is we really need to now start creating the, the social proofing functionality within the platform to allow that to happen. Um, please invite your friends and strategic partners to the live events. Um, it's, it's a celebration of, of, of the first platform in South Africa going live and, and equally as we said, you know, maybe one day the 3rd of March will be, think, have a bit of a future vision yet, maybe one day the 3rd of March will, will be where $15 billion is invested in projects around the world in, in a 24 hour period. And then, um, you know, you know please, uh, please share with your whole database, you know, use the channel partner so that you can measure it if you want to, you can see how many people have clicked, you can see who's clicked. You can measure everything. So if you want to do that, get all the Melanie. If you just want to tell people about it, then tell people about it. But um, you know, really with the giving away an apartment, I understand you don't necessarily want to tell your friends to you know, go and invest with us and you know, for some reason something goes wrong. But there's no harm in sharing with all your friends um, a competition to be able to win a, 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 an apartment in one of the tallest, well, the tallest building in Cape Town, one of the most iconic buildings in Africa in one of the most iconic cities in the world. And um, really, I ask you to open up your databases and send it to everyone. Let's get as many users on the platform as quickly as possible. Because the sooner we grow the users, the sooner we continue to grow the value within the company. And then, uh, just in terms of where we're at, I know at the end of last year there were a number of people that uh, were keen and came, came to some of the Wealth Partner events. Um, if, if you're still thinking about it or interested, uh, you know, get hold of me. There's not a lot of space left um, with the shareholders and, uh, and leadership team and team um, actually taking up those uh, shares at the at the share price that was agreed at the board meeting. But I um, and, 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 and 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 there'll be none left if um, if RMI come to the picture. But um, you know, I always just want to let wealth partners know if they do want to increase, um, you know, with all this good uh, good stuff happening. Particularly, you know, for me with the testimonials from the external people about how excited they are. One last thing I would say to you is that Henny, actually, oh, that's what I meant by Henny and Peter back right in the beginning. I've just remembered that. They went to an event at uh, Gibbs University, which is the MBA school here in Johannesburg. Peter Fenster was invited. Some of the top businessmen in the country were actually there. And it was a Harvard professor that, that uh, actually is helping exponential companies around the world now. And um, it was interesting at the end, uh, you know, so they got the whole spiel on exponentials and blah, blah, blah. And at the end, Peter Fenster went up to this guy and said, "Listen, I'd like to ask you whether, you know, this, uh, you know, th this idea is a is a good idea." And the guy said, "You know, well, what about the compliance?" And and Peter said, "No, well, we've actually, you know, we've managed to integrate and we've, we've got a solution for that and explained it." And the guy said, "I'm not only interested, I want to invest." So I think on that basis, Peter had, had enough uh, enough validation from Justin Clark, Bill Palladino, Martin Freeman. Um, that that uh, that Deloitte guy Willem van der Post 
um, which is why I think he agreed the deal today. So, so in conclusion, you know, I say to all of you, you know, we need your help, please. Uh, we need your help to unlock this now. And uh, with a minimum investment of a thousand rand uh, locally and a thousand dollars overseas, you know, there's no reason now why we can't reach out. I know my brother's just become a wealth partner, and I know for a fact that we've got truly exciting and good quality projects uh, that people can participate in. So, if you can help us on the social proofing side. If you you know got some properties you want to necessarily um, you know speak to Michiel about on the selection side, we do we do really want kind of income producing properties that, that have a track record um, because that obviously builds uh, faith with with investors quickly. And um, yeah, most importantly, we ask you to help us get out there, let the users know about it now, uh, and let's get those uh, user numbers up and those transaction numbers up. You know, the platform is is now fully functional. And um, if we do this, ladies and gentlemen. We will unlock a generational opportunity. Once a generation, there's an opportunity to build a, a unicorn, a global company that, that, that dramatically impacts the way the world works, whether it's a Google or an Apple or a Facebook or an Uber. This is a generational opportunity. And we are now sitting, as Justin Clark said, so close. And we just need to unlock it. And the way we'll unlock it is through our community and through us all working together um, to succeed. So that's all from my side. I just want to check. I think that's the thank you page. Let me see if there's any questions. I know one of the questions that came up earlier was uh, about uh, Kevin and Ricky. So um, yeah, I've, uh, I've got a huge admiration for both of them. Uh, Ricky joined us straight out of. Uh, Straight out of university, he came on a buyer's trip. He actually dragged his father along and they invested. And, um, you know, he joined uh, literally straight out of university and has been instrumental in the company. He's, he's worked in all different areas of the business, including being in China for three months. And he was always going to be entrepreneurial. His dad's one of the most entrepreneurial guys in, in, in the country. And uh, he's decided it's, it's really time for him to, to go and, and follow that. And, and Kevin uh, equally is 32 and, and at that stage of life where you know, now it's now or never, really. You know, to, to be able to look at that. So they've uh, they're going together. They've uh, formed a digital agency in terms of you know looking at, at how to digitize businesses and also the property component. Um, but what I really like about it, from an exponential perspective, is both uh, Kevin and uh, Ricky came up to Nizhny. They spent uh, two days with me and uh, me and Lyndon, and we looked at all the different ways of how we can uh, work together and effectively scale resources. The, the first thing on scale is. Is, uh, is, is, is being able to have uh, teams. It's not about having everyone under one roof or in one team. As so I think it's actually really exciting around the whole um, you know, growing of teams and, and equally the autonomy. And so we're already uh, working together. And Kevin's still uh, actively helping with the funding and the Wealth Partners, uh, which is an arrangement we've, we've put in place. And, and Ricky's looking at uh, some of the institutional funding, et cetera. And there's, there's a number of different ideas in terms of where we're at. So, you know, we've, we've obviously wished them well already, um, and it's you know, extremely exciting what they're doing. But I, you know, I, I believe that um, you know, very much, you know, well, I certainly want them to be very much part of the ecosystem, and, and hopefully we'll be doing many more things, and including you know, that whole thing that innovation always happens at the edge of the organization, not necessarily in the center. So um, I challenge them on a consistent basis to keep challenging us. OK. Um, so I should have actually had a little vote. That would have been quite interesting. Let me just see if I can do a poll here. Let me see if I can create one quickly. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. OK, so it doesn't matter. Um, I was going to see if I could create a poll um, and see what people think between A and B. Um, OK, so let's just see on questions quickly. Um, do, 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 do historical terms are so important to get users, agree. Can we add Memphis properties? So yes, Mandy, we're looking at, uh, at different options in terms of, so if, you know, we, um, Kevin's already done a lot of work um, on the, the people that wanted to look at, at consolidating and putting it into a fund or a REIT. So there's a lot of work. Uh, Cliff, Cliff is actually uh, working with, uh, with them on that now. Um, uh, uh, Hundred dollars is more than a thousand rand. Uh, yes, I know that, Megan. But we are getting there slowly. The Rome wasn't built in a day. I want it to be one dollar if I possibly can. But um, I'm really excited that the team is trying to drop it as fast as possible. Um, can we invest more as uh, as individual investors? 
um, a yes Aldi, um, that, that is possible if you want to just, uh, if, you know, just, just send me a message. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, how much of the new board members funding in bulk might write? Um, it's interesting, um, Andrew, there's um, a commitment um, from them, so I've already told you Henny and I are uh, 125 each, so that's 250. Um, it, it's probably going to be somewhere in the region of a million to two million dollars, um, just, just from the board members, leadership team, and uh, some of the team members. So I'll actually, I'll, I'll finalize that number once I know. Um, I only, I, you know, they, they verbally agreed over the weekend, and I've literally given them the proposals uh, this morning. I only had time, I only met with any yesterday. Um, when is South by Southwest? It is the 11th of March. Uh, we're going to launch a virtual voucher uh, like Uber. Oh, so yeah, so that's very good. If you know how the virtual voucher thing works with Uber, that's, really, that's what we're going to launch. That's what Cliff is building. Uh, send advert that we can send out. We will do Howard. Uh, do you need help with the marketplace? Petro, always, uh, please. Um, so, you know, um, in terms of, I don't know if you were involved with uh, Jay and the team in terms of the design there, but um, yeah, if, uh, if you want to get involved, in, and particularly Petra, with your idea around, um, um, you know, big launches and everything else, we don't want to do kind of an old traditional IPS breakfast show. We want to do a kick-ass, like one day, like global launch, even if we have dual things going on, in, you know, on site in Cape Town. With zero to one, and and um, and also in Johannesburg, we're also talking to Roger Hamilton about uh, you know uh, launching with their game farm as well. So we're really going to have hopefully a lot of exciting opportunities with a lot of stock in South Africa, uh, the US, the UK, and Australia, all at the same time. So um, I'm going to. This is what you call real time. <laughs> uh, Okay, so A or B. And um, let me just see if there's more questions there. I want to create one last poll. Oh, the one thing I didn't share with you, uh, which, I, which I really should have, that was silly of me, um, was Aula. So this was Cliff Kayat, and I think, uh, Kevin, if you online, I know you're online just now. Uh, Cliff Kai shared this with us, with, with me, and then Kevin, Kevin actually shared it with me as well, um, which I find fascinating. So don't, don't leave yet. Let me just do this quick poll. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm going to have a bit of fun. It's late at night. I uh, tomorrow's my birthday, so I'm allowed to have a bit of fun. Um, right, so let me go back to. Sorry, I was trying to show you about Aula. I should have really remembered about this. So this is a, this is a crowdsourced information. So we can't change this in any way. There's nothing we can do to manipulate this. So this is crowdsourced. It's people finding information all over. Um, you know, and 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 basically they bring it all together. And what's really interesting is that, um, so, so Cliff brought this up um, and, and Kevin showed me, so it tells, it's all this information about us, but there's nothing that we can do to change it, okay? So they reckon our estimated revenue, it's quite nice, they, 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 they think that I'm fairly, uh, you know, I've got a fairly good approval, thank goodness. Um, the lady that runs Realty Mogul is at like 30%, so I'm glad I'm not in that, that bracket. Um, they reckon we're making about a million dollars a year, but about 48 employees, which is actually unbelievable how accurate that is. Um, they reckon our biggest competitors are Fundrise, Realty Share, our funding, Realty Mogul, CrowdSheet, Property Moose, Real Crowd, and Property Partner, which is pretty good because I have all of the, <laughs> those guys in our comparisons. Um, uh, and then if you look here in terms of our comparative set, you can see here the number of employees. Um, I know this is wrong because um, I know that Realty Mogul have over 80 um, in terms of, so it's also just interesting. You can see our total funding, so they're, a bit, they're actually a bit down on our funding because we're up to 7.6 now. But you can see what the other guys have, have, have got. Um, and you can also see the revenues in, in terms of uh, where, you know, where they are and what they're doing basically. Um, now again, it's all crowdsourced information, so it's just really interesting. 
um, in terms of what they're doing. And then this one's interesting in terms of, oh no, that's not so interesting in terms of funding. That's the revenue history, acquisitions, then um, the number of employees, uh, and this is all us in the news. And then the social statistics, you can see Twitter and Facebook likes, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the work that Jay and the digital team have been doing. You can see the different look and feels of the website. Uh, and then lastly, just down the bottom, I want to read this. So this is the summary of what they say about Wealth Migrate. Whether it's right or wrong, it just is. Wealth Migrate is an online platform that allows users to invest in real estate properties. Wealth Migrate was founded in October 2008. Wealth Migrate's headquarters are located on Level 19, Two International Finance Center, 8 Financial Street, Hong Kong. Uh, it has raised $4 million in round one. The latest round was in 2015. Uh, so that's outdated. Wealth Migrate, and the only reason that's outdated, we haven't done a press release about any funding since. So that's why I've spoken to Joy about doing that. Wealth Migrate's finance here is Kapikin, currently has approval rating of 90%. 80% of our community believes Wealth Migrate will IPO. Wealth Migrate has an estimated 48 employees and an estimated annual revenue of 1.1. Um, so why that's interesting, if I just go here, and, and Kevin pointed this out to me, is if we go to Realty Mogul, oh, you can't see my screen. Shit, man. Guys, you really need to shout when you can't see my screen. Please, like, I, uh, um, right, so now I've got to go back to Wealth Migrate. I'm not going to go back into it, but you can just see the look and feel of it. Um, and if you want the link, go to Aula and type in, so A-W-L-E-R, um, and you can basically see it. But anyway, that's the look and feel of what I was looking at. Really, guys, you have to shout on the, on our own internal team if you can't, if you can't, I can't see if you can see my screen or not. Okay, can you now see my screen now? Yes? No? Yes. Okay, um, so let me do what I was trying to show you. So if you look there, we're at, nine, at, at an 80% uh, think we're going we're gonna to up here. Uh, if you go to Realty Mogul, which has had the most funding uh, worldwide, uh, oh, sorry, I was a bit wrong, it's not 30, it's 51. Um, but what's interesting, you go right down to the bottom there. So they've got different information on all the different companies, but, or similar, but some of them have different. Uh, but what's interesting here, is that 50% um, of our community believes Realty Mogul will fail. So I think they've got uh, IPO, bought, or fail. Um, so that's fascinating, yeah? Um, anyway, at least we are on the right side of the community worldwide, if you want to call it that. So uh, if any of you want to go to Aula, you get to vote as well. Uh, no harm in our rankings being higher. We haven't done that, by the way. Uh, it's the first time we found out about it. but. Um, it is just valuable. I'd, I'd be surprised if VCs and stuff are not looking at this. Okay, so let me just, uh, I want to quickly select a poll because I am finished now unless there's questions. But uh, I'll answer questions while we have a poll. So do you think we should go A or B on the option side? And I'll leave the poll open while I answer questions here. Uh, the background is great where it is. So I'm not sure, Michael, what that was about. So maybe someone could give us a webinar explaining how this all works. RPO, uh, Capital Series A. Sure, they were more like me. Who is not on par here? Um, okay, Pierre. I um, I have. I'm, I'm kind of keeping you updated on all these things. But maybe what we'll do is we we'll do a funding uh, webinar. You know, more from a just a funding presentation. Um, I like quick come visit. <laughs> Option to invest monthly. Um, that, uh, Louis, is uh, coming out uh, with a debit order function. Um, we're hoping to bring it out uh, sooner, um, but it's definitely coming out in market uh, version 5. Um, and Michael, what is it like to be 40? I don't know, Michael. I'm still a young. I'm still young. I'm on the, uh, I'm, it's, still first, uh, it's still the first half. The ref has been looking up at the counter and, um, you know, on, on the rugby clock. And, uh, you know, it's nearly time to go into the halfway house. But, uh, but uh, yeah, the game's still playing at the moment. There might be time for one more try. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, yes, yes. What is all the? Oh, can you see me? Uh, can't show it, not zoom. Uh, yes, thought you were reading it from a magazine. <laughs> Background of your video image behind you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Background's great. Yeah. 
Sorry, I'm tired. We've had a very long week. <laughs> so yeah, the background is uh, we're in the Centurion office. It's the wall that they put with all. It's pretty iconic, actually. You've got Singapore, you've got uh, Big Ben, London, obviously. Um, we have no idea what that building is. I think it's Chicago, though. Um, again, I'm not quite sure on that one. And then obviously Sydney Opera House, um, in terms of where we're at. You guys know what these two are. Okay. So, guys, if there's no more question, oh, we can't see you. Oh. <laughs> having a field day today because <laughs> I'm running my poll. Okay, so it's interesting. Let's close the poll. Only 69% of you voted. So the other, I would like to say this because we're all friends and business partners. The other 31% of you are lazy. Um, so 95% think we should go uh, B and 5% think we should go A. So we'll take that as uh, rhetorical evidence that we need to continue building the marketplace. And uh, let me hide those results. Uh, for those of you who wanted to see the backdrop, those were the, those were the uh, buildings I was talking about. Um, there's JP. <laughs> um, and then lastly, I'm having a bit of fun tonight. <laughs> Who thinks that, uh, do you think we can become a unicorn? So if anyone doesn't understand, a unicorn is a billion dollar company uh, and generally built within seven years. It doesn't have to be within seven years, but generally built within seven years. So, um, Quite uh, frankly at the moment, the Aula ranking is higher than, well it's 80%, which I think is quite exciting So um, in terms of where we're at. So any questions? Uh, but otherwise I'm just going to keep talking shit. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, with the poll, we up we can't see. Okay, yeah, no, I sorted that out. Okay, seventy-two percent have voted. I'm pretty glad. I, sh I should, I should hope with the uh, wealth partners here that uh, we'd get a result like that. But um, yeah, so pretty resounding, hundred percent. And the good news is, it wasn't just me that voted. Seventy-two percent of you voted, and um, we've uh, we've got a lot of people. We've got over. Let's see, 30, 54. We've got over 50 people online, so um, just just interesting. So, guys, if there's no more questions, that is uh, that is all the updates. Um, you've got the dates. Um, I'll go back to them just so that you can uh, just you can remember them quickly. Um, in terms of where we're at, you know, really uh, helping us would be of huge uh, huge benefit. So, the wealth partner dinners, 28th of Feb, 1st of March, uh, Cape Town, the 2nd of March, the big day. No one's given us any ideas yet. If you've got any ideas, type them up now, please. If you don't, uh, if you don't have any ideas, uh, but you think of something, send it to me as a private WhatsApp. Um, and maybe if you're interested, uh, we'll create a separate little WhatsApp group that can, uh, you know, come up with ideas and bounce ideas. But I know Jay and the team will probably have to have this finalised in, you know, probably by the weekend. So because um, we need to rock and roll, it's three weeks, uh, three weeks on Friday, um, and we are doing it uh, timelessly. We are doing it quickly because that's what exponential organizations do. They don't talk, they do. So uh, uh, it's all about the viral effect. And then obviously the giving away the launch, the World Partner Weekend, you should have, hopefully have it all there. So if there's no questions from you guys, I turn 40 tomorrow. Um, I'm taking uh, uh, me and 12 friends are going up to Big Falls uh, tomorrow morning to go and white water raft and misbehave for three days uh, without our wives and children. Because um, we're so old now, we um, we don't have any more weddings or bachelors, so this was an excuse to to just uh, have some fun. So um, yeah, I think that's pretty much me being able to dial out and now consider myself on leave for three days. And yes, Michael, uh, tomorrow morning when I wake up, I'm sure I'll feel a lot older as I go into the second half of my next uh, on the rugby pitch. But uh, yeah, thanks as I said to you, sincere sincere gratitude to everyone. And um, I can see there's some ideas coming through here. So we've got Financial Freedom Day. Um, oh, we've got lots of ideas actually. Uh, Spurge Day, Splash Day, Breaking Free Day. Uh, thanks, Pierre, on the birthday wishes. Uh, zero to Hero. I quite like that actually. Hashtag Zero to Hero. Uh, property Frenzy. We are Exponentium. Global Property Blowout. The Big Bang Day. This is the name for 3 March. Uh, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. No, the, the, the thing is not happy birthday. Andrew Cooper said happy birthday, old fart. Andrew, older than me, so uh, take, that, uh, take, take that with anything. Uh, and yeah, I think that's everything. Uh, 
Happy birthday, enjoy the falls. Big splash Friday. Yeah, well, guys, keep them coming. Keep thinking about it. Let's uh, maybe what we'll even do. I know Jay's online. Uh, Jay, maybe what we should do is maybe uh, somehow use the or Kevin as well use the community platform because I know we can put names up there and people can vote on it. That would actually be an awesome way to cancel. So watch the WhatsApp group. Um, we'll figure something out where people can put names up and we can vote on them um, in, in some way so we can social proof it. So guys, I think that's all from my side. Um, there's no more questions coming through. Um, with deep gratitude uh, to all of you who are online tonight and to those of you who listen to the recording, thank you for being part of this journey. I, I deeply, deeply appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I really think uh, onward and upward. Let's make sure that that our uh, prediction becomes a reality and um, we all create a lot of wealth for ourselves. But one of the things far more important is that we solve the greatest challenge on the planet. And uh, when we do that, I have absolutely no doubt in my mind that we will um, create something that's purposeful on this planet and leave a destiny behind us that is far more important uh, than just ourselves. So thank you for being part of it. And um, yeah, please do what you can to help. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Cheers.